China lost 42 soldiers in the June 2020 Galvan Valley clash, at least nine times more than the four it has acknowledged. That's a report quoted by the Australian newspaper, The Claxon. Uh, it has appeared in The Claxon, the investigative piece by Anthony Clan, the editor of The Claxon, who joins us now, is based on the work of a group of social media researchers who've been able to unearth a sustained effort by Chinese officials to bury the truth on what really happened in the Galwan Valley. Remember, India lost 20 soldiers. The number was officially acknowledged, as is always the case. But there have always been questions on whether the casualty count announced by China of four killed in action was at all accurate. According to the Claxon, it was not. Joining us now, Anthony Clan. Thanks, Anthony, very much for being with us. You know, uh, lots of interesting bits in your, uh, in your article, the first of two. So I'm just going to pull out a couple of quotes and then let's talk about it. First up, the article says, evidence provided by a group of social media researchers, which the Claxon has independently built on, appears to support claims that China's casualties extended well beyond the four soldiers named by Beijing. What exactly have these social media researchers unearthed? So the social media researchers have been working for about a year on this. They've, they've uncovered quite a number of points. Um, the key point being uh, there were many, uh, many more Chinese soldier deaths than has been reported or claimed by China, of course, as you mentioned before. There are a couple of other points also. Um, there were, in fact, two clashes. Uh, there have been Chinese media reports that have conflated the two. Um, there was one uh, altercation that occurred. This is on June 6, 2020. Yep. And then there was the June 15 altercation uh, in which we saw the casualties, um, the many casualties. Um, so the, at, at, the, at the nub of it, there was the, the, the battle or the, the, um, the, the confrontation, the deadly confrontation came about regarding a, a temporary bridge that Indian soldiers had erected over a stream of the Golwan Valley uh, in order to allow them to pass to, to inspect Chinese installations in the buffer zone. So there's a buffer zone. Um, the agreement was that uh, neither party would install infrastructure uh, in the buffer zone. Um, so what's what's occurred is India has built this temporary bridge to to inspect what Ch uh, China's doing in the region or doing in the in the buffer zone. Now China's allegedly building infrastructure, uh, putting up tents, uh, building dugouts, uh, and having large machinery in the area. So the confrontation on June sixth involved several hundred soldiers. There was no uh, no deaths. It was it was more of a confrontation than than a, than a major scuffle. But officers of each side of the um, of the debate. Agreed, made an agreement or allegedly made an agreement in order uh, to, to, to fuse the situation. So infrastructure of each side would be removed. Now, what's happened um, that we've managed to ascertain and it's been backed up by numerous sources is that in the interim, rather than removing its infrastructure, um, Chinese forces have removed this temporary bridge that India was using in order to inspect. Uh, and this has led to the June 15 conflict. So India has come across um, to, dis to, to discuss this or to, 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 to meet with Chinese uh, soldiers and Chinese uh, officers. Yes. Uh, and this is when the scuffle's broken out. And so that particular evening when we've got soldiers that have, have come across, there was a, there was a battle, um, several soldiers were killed. And in heading back across the river, this is when we're told or oh, the evidence is that um, numerous or many Chinese soldiers were in fact washed away. Now, we're talking about um, the Golwan River at sub-zero temperatures. It's pitch black at night um, and there's boulders, etc. at the bottom. So this is how many of the, the Chinese casualties um, came, came, to, came to occur. Um, and we know this on the basis of what was posted on Chinese social media, which was then censored, right? Yeah, so there's a number of sources. There's conversations with people on the ground. Right. There's Chinese media sources. Now, of particular weight is uh, contemporaneous reports at the time um, of what's actually occurred. And this has sort of gone through in quite a considerable detail regarding the, the, the soldiers washed away. Um, adding weight to that is the fact that you have... Um, China has gone out of its way to, to censor particularly any information regarding casualties um, from the Golwan battle that evening, the Chinese side casualties. Um, and that extends to, as we know, China came out, it, it said nothing for the first eight months about regarding its casualties. And then on February the 19th, it announced there were four deaths. Each soldier had been posthumously awarded a, a bravery medal. Um, the following day, 
Chinese authorities announced that a, a, a prominent journalist in China uh, had been arrested or had been uh, sacked from his job for stating that, that the four deaths wasn't correct. In fact, it was much, much higher. Um, so that's sending out a signal for people, you know, for, for others to... Sure. To so, Anthony, let me ask you this. Um, the evidence now of approximately 38 odd Chinese soldiers having been washed away is based on conversations as well, uh, which is what takes you know, the, the entire story forward in a sense. Your conversations with your sources, uh, deemed credible sources, and of course what you've discussed or described as the efforts made by China to sort of curtail the truth coming out. And therefore you've added one and one together and you're absolutely sure that there were 38 Chinese soldiers who, uh, you know, who went down the Galwan River and died. We know that it's substantially more than four deaths. The precise figure has been, we keep coming back to is this 38 figure. There have been uh, higher figures put out in uh, Indian media, uh, up to 100 or something. One, one report put it higher than 100. Now, we haven't been able to confirm that. We're not saying that's not true. We just, we, we can't confirm that. Um, but the, but the, the 38, 38 is yeah. based on your conversations, am I right? Uh, the 38, yes, the 38 is based on our research from a number of a number of sources, including um, the social media um, investigations and conversations with people on the ground. Yes. Now, uh, the next quote uh, from your article, it also shows extreme lengths Beijing has gone in order to silence discussion about the battle, in particular discussion about the true number of Chinese casualties. So how did it actually happen on Weibo, uh, Chinese social media? their version of Twitter, there was a lot of conversation, right? And there were first person accounts as well, some of them from soldiers or apparently from soldiers who actually witnessed a lot of this happening. And then That's that correct. was taken down. That's correct. And, and of course, the fact that that was taken down and, and with such haste, um, we've managed to, to uh, obtain um, recorded records of, of, of this um, source data, but that it was taken down so quickly um, gives us another strong indication of, of that China is very, very eager to to have this um, hushed up or to not have any more debate or discussion regarding the casualties. Um, another interesting point is that China has uh, Chinese state media has barely touched this at all. It, ha it hasn't reported on uh, the clash in any great detail, and it's um, there's been maybe one or two minuscule reports. So China doesn't want this information coming out. Now, one of the theories is that. The uh, Chinese officer that allegedly um, was was quite aggressive. Um, the Indians Indian side says that look, they went across and discussed this uh, with the, with the, the Chinese soldiers and with the Chinese officer, and then the Chinese officer allegedly ran quite an aggressive charge and formed a battle line. So whether that officer had authority to do that um, remains in question. So it sure. may be that that officer did not. Yeah. The next quote, the research report, which you know you've referred to in in your own report cites a year-long investigation involving discussions with mainland Chinese vloggers, information obtained from mainland Chinese, mainland-based Chinese citizens, and media reports that have since been deleted by Chinese authorities. In other words, um, in addition to your own effort at unearthing the truth, there has been an effort in China at compiling the truth as well, based on conversations that these researchers on social media have themselves had, right? And obviously, yes, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, doing that is not easy in China. No, of course. And, and that sort of the, comes back to the main point is sort of piecing together what's actually happened. Um, given you've got the threats against people speaking out. Um, exactly. That China's very clear that it doesn't want people, that, that, it's, that it's arrested the journalist. It's making it very clear that it doesn't want this information out. But on the other side, you have families whose loved ones have been killed um, serving their country. Um, who uh, are no doubt quite concerned or upset that they're not being recognised, that the, the deceased loved ones aren't being recognised. So there's that pressure. Um, now, there's, a, there's a, a line of thought that this is why China's come out eight months after the fact. Now, it actually said it wasn't going to reveal casualties, it's just policy not to, but then it came out in February and did, February 2020, that is. Sure. So the, the query is perhaps, uh, or the, the thought is that there's increasing pressure on China regarding this incident, and perhaps it thought that might take some pressure out of it. Many Chinese soldiers, you write, were killed while attempting to cross back over the fast-flowing Galwan River in the early stages of June 15th and 16th battle. What is this based on? Is this, because this is the critical bit, um, mm. is, what is this based on? Is it based on conversations that you have had 
or stuff which you have seen which has been deleted from Chinese social media, first-hand accounts, what exactly? Yeah, so it's first-hand accounts that's been deleted from Chinese social media. Uh, one count in particular involves a, uh, a first-hand account of someone who attended a funeral um, of, of one of the people that died. Now, it's worth remembering that the only one of the four soldiers that China has admitted died in the battle was, was drowned. So there's, a, there's an, a, a report particularly regarding this incident and this soldier has pushed four other, um, at least four other people across the river and then become uh, stuck in the river. And that's, this is when many other people also were swept away. All right, let's just bring up some satellite imagery of the area that we are actually talking about uh, so that I can just explain this to our viewers uh, and then come back to this conversation. Um, what you're actually seeing is that bend of the Galwan River, and this is a, a little bit further afield. Um, but th this is where the Chinese built up their construction after the clashes actually took place. Uh, these are areas where the Chinese were trying to construct a road. Um, this is where they've built up further afield some of uh, their, uh, their tents, their storage huts, and their huts for their soldiers, tents for their soldiers. Um, and it was in this area across the fast-flowing river, uh, within about 300 meters of this area that you're actually seeing on your screen, where the fighting actually took place. These are images that we procured from Maxer and from Planet Labs. Um, and this is, a, let's have this up full screen. This is the exact location, in fact, in Ladakh, uh, where this uh, took place. Um, so on the left-hand side is, is actually uh, is a river, which, which then leads into the Blue River, which is um, the Galwan River itself. The, the site of the clash is near a Y-bend of the river, uh, very close to the line of actual control. So this is where it actually took place. So I'll just uh, come back to the next quote from your, from your article. Um, again, quoting that research report, which said that comrades in arms kept slipping and being rushed uh, downstream. The one question I have about this is, if they were in the water and, and you know, it's a fast-flowing river, then how come none of these bodies actually ended up on the Indian side? Well, this is this is the thing. Now we know the following day of the battle, there was a ceasefire and there was a truce for each side to collect their their wounded or their their fallen. Um, and we have actually information. We haven't been able to confirm that yet, but we have from a couple of sources that there were actually retrievals occurring on the Indian side because that's the way the the, the river flows. Um, the following day, involving helicopters, um, but we haven't we haven't been able to firm that up with the with the Pakistan. Uh, sorry, the the, the Indian um, uh, military. So, but. That that would be consistent with the, with the flow of the river. Yes, we've, we've considered that. Um, the next quote, according to a Weibo user, Elias uh, Kiang, who claims to have served in the area, the PLA was creating infrastructure in this buffer zone, violating the mutual agreement and had been trying to expand its patrolling limits within the buffer zone since April 2020. We've, you've spoken about uh, this, but I think it's interesting that there were actually soldiers, and this has been reported in the past as well, who actually got on to social media in China and started talking about what exactly was happening. So these were first-hand accounts, and these were the ones, these accounts which were pulled down because they could have caused a great deal of damage if they haven't already. Indeed, indeed. And, and, that's what, and I believe it, it, it makes sense, the follow-on logic from that makes sense that that's why China the following day, immediately on February 20, came out and announced that the, uh, the, the, the prominent Chinese journalist had been had lost their job um, and it was elsewhere reported that he'd been arrested um, by Chinese authorities. So they made quite a quite a deal of this and they're obviously quite concerned about that and it coming out at the time. Uh, the report of the Chinese reporters quite, was quite direct and forceful in, in, in saying what had occurred. Uh, so yes, that, the, it, the, 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 the numerous factors, but particularly this focus on quietening down uh, any discussion of the of the casualties and the Chinese government made a point of stating that that particularly um, go, goes to um, very much supports what we're what we've what we've also so, uncovered elsewhere. Um, a final quote. Let's bring up uh, quote eight. Actually, uh, again quoting that that research report. After the incident, the bodies of the soldiers were first taken to Shikwanhe Martyr Cemetery, followed by local ceremonies at local towns of the killed soldiers. In other words, uh, these soldiers were in fact honoured. Uh, they were honoured by the military and their uh, mortal remains were returned to their relative uh, villages. And that uh, conspiracy of silence was enforced at all of these levels, right? 
it's it's unclear as to as to how many of these soldiers were returned and how many of these funerals right. there were. Um, we know there were definitely the four, and there there may have been some others. But the 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 the, the, the line of thought is that there there also were a number that weren't actually returned um, and weren't acknowledged um, officially. Right. And a final question to you: You've got more coming up on the story, right? Yes, we have another story coming up on Saturday with some extra information that's come forward. So we'll uh, we'll be we'll be running that on Saturday. All right, Anthony, great speaking to you. Thank you very much for joining us with that big exclusive on, uh, as I mentioned, a conspiracy of silence. How many soldiers from China actually died? Were the claims, the official claims made by the Chinese government accurate? It now appears on the basis of this research that that may not have been the case at all. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you.